All right, welcome back to the Road to SSL series. We're on to episode number 15 for today, and if you've been following the series, you'll know that we got back into our placements. We're in two out of two of our matches for both 2v2 and 3v3. It doesn't look like we've dropped too far, though. We've been getting champion games in 2v2 and around diamond in 3v3. So hopefully as we climb through the placements, we'll probably end up in grand champ in 2v2 by the end of placements, and then for 3v3, either champ or even close to grand champ. So I think as we climb here, uh, as if we continue to do well and play around our teammates, uh, we'll, we'll succeed. So yeah, let's get rid of the matches. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, we're into game number one and we have E6 or E banks maybe with user. That doesn't look sus at all. User 942, etc. Uh, we have the meme of the day for today. It's by Oh My Nuggets and it's Ritz. Apologies for this, uh, this photo. It is, uh, not my proudest moment, but as I say that, not the defender's proudest moment either. We got a first goal just from a good catch from Notorious here and E banks wasn't really able to read the, uh, the fake on that play. Um, by the way, if you want to watch the making of these uh, memes, I now do them at the end of the video, just because a lot of people were skipping through them and it doesn't really help the video a lot. I also think that a lot, um, like not as many people are keeping up with the Road to SSL as, as uh, previous seasons. Um, meanwhile, like my other videos are doing, you know, reaching a wider audience. So like, I, I, want, I want it to be, you know, still what you guys like in the video and a lot of people just want to see uh, the gameplay, so we're right into it. Uh, we got a clear here. It's gonna be off the wall, but no one's going for it for the follow. I'm just gonna try and get a read on, on the chip, and oh, that's gonna be a finish. So the way that I I went out to that ball, I knew I could still get the flip if I um, waited for the clear. I think it was user nine four two. He wasn't really showing that he was gonna go for that ball, so I waited for the the bounce off the the backboard. It could have been scary if he went for it pretty early, but at the same time, if he rushes it, it's probably not going to be as accurate of a shot. Unless you're high level, and at that point, yes, it's it's very scary to leave that ball in an open floating position like that. Both both the opponents are in the corner. I'm just trying to stay with the ball. Looks like my teammate wants it. User makes a touch off the wall, but it's going to bounce back in a mid. Let's see if Notorious passes his middle. Decent control. This ball bounces off of the corner. I'm just waiting in mid. You can see I'm just like watching for these touches. To make sure I don't overcommit. And like right here, that could have been really scary if you got that on target. Looks like Notorious wants it. I was kind of awkward. Hit 50. Teammate might be looking for boost. I can't really tell. I think he's, yeah, I think he's waiting on that boost. Nice. I think he got it. That's a great play. I like that my teammate was still trying to get involved in that ball. He really needs to like force it. And I could have pushed a little bit further ahead on this, but... Right there, that I thought he had that, to be honest. Because he didn't get the final flick, and I think that my teammate maybe pounced a little bit early because the guy was already ready to flip. The way that he was holding onto that ball made it very clear that he wasn't in full control. Um, I'm going to try to get this corner boost. Now, this is safe against the wall. So I know that I can get some sort of wall clear just from hopping off the wall a little bit. And here, I don't want to give any space off that catch. Try and look for the bump. Good clear of the corner. I'm just watching what happens with this touch. I have the ball here. I'll pop it up. And you see, I'm not really getting like a direct goal here, but I'm just waiting on the left side because I know that's like pretty much the only position they can clear the ball to. And in doing so, I'm already in a better position for the next touch. Waiting behind E Banks here. He does miss. Now Notorious has the ball for free. Users by himself. Let's see how the dribble goes. And that's sort of what E Banks needed to do on that first defensive play last time. I'm gonna hit this across. Ooh, off the mark. Great control from my teammate. Now I have lots of space. I can take this off the wall if I want. I could also catch this off the wall right here to keep it close. I'm going to try and hit this across. Great, great, great read from user. That isn't the best option there. I'll cut this for my teammate as well. And the reason why that wasn't the greatest option is because there's two players like sitting very offensively positioned, not like shadowing. They're, they're facing towards the ball and towards the play. And in that position, like if they cut it off while my teammate's trying to cut across the field like that, it could be uh, on on target on our net and nobody's back. My teammate has possession again. A bit of a heavy touch, but he could maybe get a chip here. Oh. Yeah, so what, what's wrong with Ebanks' positioning is like, he has to close the gap a little bit here. Like, on this touch, he has to close right there. Because you can see, Notorious didn't really have a strong touch. He had to get further around the ball to really get a lot of power, but he wasn't there yet. And so at that point, Ebanks needs to like push up on that and make an attack. I'm going to stay close to this ball here. Get it around him. Good try. Now, both teammates, both opponents went. So I'm going to try and pull this around. 
Hit this across. See if he wants to go for it again. Looks like E-Banks might have it. But once again, I'm positioning for the best option. And I'm on the ball again. Hit this across. I like that my team is ready for it. He's not making the best touches. He's making okay touches. Like, it's um, not, like, horrible results. At least he's ready for it. I'm waiting for this touch here. See if he goes first. Good try. This is a little bit dangerous. Things go off the wall here, and they could score. Looks like they might have the clear here, and that's exactly a situation why you don't go for those um, touches in an aggressive spot. I could have definitely play, played that faster. I, I like slowly approached it, um, but that's that's the kind of th thing where if you try to like play a beat as last man and your teammates like over invested in the net, um, you can get really easily dunked into a position where they just hit it down the field. See my teammate can get it. Nice save. Don't really need a goal right now. We're just trying to hold possession. Good touches from my teammate. It's off the backboard. It's a great read, but I'm here. I see my teammate, the opponent trying to rush it. There we go. Looks my teammate has it. I'm just going to loop behind him, grab a couple pads. You can see I just picked up 36 boosts just from that. Wow. <laughs> Someone's eager. That was a great play from Notorious. Like, he, Unfortunately, he didn't recover the best, but I don't know what user was doing, man. <laughs> that was uh, interesting. Let's cheat up here a little bit. Whoa. Interesting kickoff choice. Now let this sit, sit off the wall here. Try to cut it off. You can see, like, I've made a couple mistakes, and still you're able to win the game. You know, mistakes aren't everything. Like, good positioning, just good good rotations around, around your teammates is all you truly need to win some of these games. And Notorious played well as, as well. He's an ultimate baller, as you can see. He, he's a prodigy. He, he played really well. And I don't think that's like means he's a Smurf. He honestly was just like a champ player who moved pretty fast. He's angry now. I mean, I'll 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 give uh, the benefit of the doubt because E Banks made a couple mistakes as well. I mean, it's a team game. Uh, it's easy to get frustrated. You know, I get frustrated at the game. It's always at the highest level. It's very interesting what happens sometimes. Just like the most random stuff happens. But it's just Rocket League. It's one of the hardest games to play in the world, and um. It's insane how fast we've all learned to adapt to the game. And, you know, the skill ceiling has kind of been met to a point. And we're seeing people still improve at the pro level. But, you know, it's getting to the point where, like, we've basically reached close to what Rocket League can truly look like. Like, I know there's a lot of things going around in Rocket League right now. But, like, the Licks jump or, uh, like, the AI, the way that the, the, the bots play in certain positions. And the way that, like, a task looks. If Rocket League ever gets to that point, like... Take me out, man. I, I'm done. I'm, that's it for me. I like the way that the Rocket League is played to a degree right now because, you know, it's a very natural, f like, feeling game. But um, if everybody starts to become, like, actual robots, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Sign me out. I'm out. Now let's see what Poppy does here. That's a great touch because it lets Jad stay on this ball before I can get to it. Now I'm trying to do with this aerial is just keep it tight into the corner. Off target. Round one, and now I have space in this. Oh, okay. I didn't mean to get that strong of a flick, um, but it didn't end up working. Like that, that play in the corner right here was just to pop it over the one player, and then I'm trying to stay close to the ball and get that final uh, flick over him. And I was just trying to force something on net there. Okay, this ball can roll up the backboard. You don't need to touch it right now. And stay with this. See what Jad does. Are you kidding me? I mean, that's that's the kind of thing that I wanted to do. I wanted to draw an opponent in, but I didn't expect it to go on target. I mean, like, this is kind of crazy. I don't feel like I've done anything insane. Sometimes Rock League just happens like this. You don't really like know. You, it's like a it's like a like a hot flash. I don't even know what to say. It's just like a minute goes by and like goals are being scored left and right. All right, so that's down the field. If they what they do here? Oh, he backs off. You have a lot of space there. Good cut for my teammate. I'm going to stay close to the ball here. Try and force something in here. They're afraid to challenge me, and that's just I'm staying close to the ball. I'm staying behind the ball. Like, players don't really want to put themselves in an uncomfortable, uncomfortable position. Um, but sometimes you have to put yourself there because you need to trust your teammate to support those other positions. Oh, good try. If that, if that was a shot on target, that was a really good opportunity for them because my teammate was out of position. It was a little scary because they could cut for this. That's off target. I'm going to try and stay with this. Good cut. And great turn for Poppy. 
These aggressive turns are not that dangerous as long as I'm close to the ball and like I keep myself in a comfortable position. Don't panic. It's a lot of wasted boost from Jad. You gotta keep in mind that he just used like 30 to 40 and he probably didn't have 100 to begin with. So he's probably pretty low. And you can see he's running back to net. But now he's gonna be pretty low and he probably can't properly attack this. Like he's spurting a lot of boost. I'm hearing him do a lot of boost usage. And now he's very low. So if I take this boost... I take this. He's not going to have a lot of boost to work with. I'm going to leave that one because hopefully my teammate can go take it. You see Jad's panicking now. He's panicking because, like, look, he has no boost. That's all you need to do in those positions where you... If you keep tabs on a certain player and you know they're low, a lot of pros will do that. And it's really frustrating to play against. If they know you're low boost, they will go around and play around your pads. And sometimes you can just wait for mistakes because they are panicking on the fact they have no boost. And they think there's a shot looming or something's going to come from it. Oh, wow. Dude, this game is, like, kind of just falling apart. <laughs> like, just very, like, open shots that I don't expect. Because, like, Vintage is just, like, staying... Like, Jad is not defending goal side. He needs to be to the left a little bit more. Because with Vintage Roller's body language, he's behind, straight behind the ball. We talked about... I talked about this in a different video that was one of my uh, high-level games. That, like, if you're just behind the ball, there's not much you can do um, with the ball. You have to change your angles, change your positioning. Good save. It's a good catch from Jad. Not, unfortunately, didn't hit the uh, the last touch. Try this up to my teammate. Be a finish. Good try. Definitely seems like Jad and Poppy aren't really like vibing together. That's a great shot. That's a great flick. That's really good control. I just could possession. Definitely can shadow that better. And I could definitely position and like, you know, defend that. I could hop up and touch that. I don't think champ players are quite at that level to do that. This is an awkward ball here. If they make a good play here, make a good shot. That's honestly a, a great play. Like in that position, I need to jump up a lot faster. You need to react like right here. I could jump up with the 30, 40 boost I had. And um, instead just like, it's awkward if you sit in the net like that. Once again, it's like one of those things where like I would immediately react at SSL level. I don't think that's like something that a champ player would do. But if you want to become better and you want to become a grand champ, you got to position for those opportunities. I sit behind my teammate here who should be able to maybe get on the ball. It's a great bump. But teammate didn't want to go. Try and back off on this. This could be a good shot from them. Oh, good try. Could be a goal. Oh, it's off the post. Okay, I'm going to sit with this ball now. I'm going to try and like just stress this guy out and this guy. Just try to stay close to the ball. Now, Vintage Roller is up for this. It's a little scary. I'm going to try and get behind here. And you see, I needed to recover because once I see my teammate panicking a little bit and making a bad touch, I need to get into the best position I can. I'm going to just take this boost, get behind. Oh, it's a decent touch, but it's going to put them in a, in a spot to shoot this. Great, great recovery on the save, though. Looking for my teammate. I don't see him. Pretty aggressive positioning for my teammate uh, to go on that, but this is a good opportunity for Poppy. He does just throw the ball away, though, so I do get the clear. Oh, both players go. Looking for my teammate. He wants to cut this off. Great read. This ball's in a good spot. I can go for this. I hit this off the backboard. Poppy can't quite get it. What a save. That's a good recovery from him in the net. I got to wait for my teammate to try and force something. I like that he's trying to make something happen. Oh, there we go. One last chance. Oh, it's up the wall. Honestly, like, I think that there were, there were way too many goals that were scored, like, wildly random goals at the very start. Um, positions that I really didn't think I should have been in. Because, uh, like, right here, I said in-in. I don't know why I said in-in. Don't, don't listen to me. Like, Jad was in an awkward spot there. That was similar to my experience when I was in the net where I could have jumped up early. He could have probably jumped up for that ball. And it's something that you need to get used to in maybe, like, defensive training packs. If you're not comfortable jumping for those super early with, like, 30 to 40 boost, make sure you're picking up all those pads on your way back to net, too. It's really important. All right, once again, we got 2v2. So we're still at 2 to 10 on 3v3. This is going to be our fifth game in twos. I know that I haven't really been doing Road to SSL that often. And like I said, I feel like the Road to SSL videos are definitely a smaller audience lately. And that's probably because maybe I'm not the rank that people want to be seeing for themselves. Or, you know, 
people are just looking to have fun in Rocket League and they're just w looking to watch like more unique stuff. I'm trying to pass this. I didn't pass this at all. <laughs> I don't know why I hit that forward. Good touch for my teammate though. I'm gonna try and get on this ball. I cut it off. And you can see that's really bad because it goes right off the backboard. Great read from uh, Wizard. I'm not gonna read that actually. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna call him Wiz. Wait a minute. What's that all about? Omogus. Okay, and once again, this is one of those situations where you need to go up the ball, uh, up to the ball, off the backboard. If you don't, they have a chance on target. Obviously, he, he came in way too hot. Oh, good try. Looks like he wants to stay with this. So I'm just gonna let him do that. He's really awkward on this ball. And I can cut on this ball. That that touch that he made right there was way too strong. Hits off the backboard. See what uh, Gageo does. He touches the corner. I'm gonna try and stay with this. Hit this towards target. Great save from them. See what my teammate's doing. I'm trying to get, get an eye on what he's doing, where he wants to be. Okay. Looks like he wants to take it across. I'm going to let him do that. Got to trust that he's not going to own goal there. It's a good touch. Hit this up. See if we can get a bump or something. Ooh. Left the boost there. I had full, so he, he can get the full. I'm going to cut this off. This is a super awkward bu uh, ball for this guy. Going to miss. Hopefully, there's an opportunity for my teammate. Send it home. Nice shot. I don't I don't know if that's towards me or if he's saying I love you because he scored. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Maybe he's been having a, a rough set of teammates for the day. Good touch to the back wall. You can see I'm looking to see where uh, Gageo is. And I have space on this ball. Great read for my teammate. I'm trying to just force in a, a touch from uh, Gageo there. This ball going to bounce off the wall. See if he goes for this immediately. He does miss. I kind of just position um, for that play by being close to it, but not fully committing, not like putting all my cards in or eggs in one basket. That looks like this guy has a touch. I can cut it off here. It's back to Gageo though. Good try. And now when I see him landing, I know that I can... Oh, wow. I didn't even mean to do that. I it just, <laughs> just kind of popped off my car. Um, right, right there, I know Gageo can't do anything. Um, with that ball while he's landing because he's already used his flip. And so I have time to go at that ball and attack it. Okay, free ball off the wall here. I don't think this guy's going to go because it's too close to the the net. Now this ball is already kind of leading into the corner, so I'm going to focus on the boost in this situation because the ball is already progressing towards their, their corner. It's kind of hard to really make a play on the ball there where it's going ahead of me. Good save. I'll try to jump for this. Might be over my head. Good try from Gageo. Should be a corner boost for my teammate. He ends up leaving it. Looks like he has 100. So that was a lot of information that he just gave the opponents. That he had 100 and they were able to get the boost. So they knew that, you know, in that position he has... And if he takes the boost, obviously he has 100 too. But, but now they have more confidence because they have the boost. Good try. Should we looking for pads here? See if he maybe wants to cut it. I could have maybe left that for my teammate too. Hit it across here. That's a good catch from them. Good dunk though from uh, my teammate. I'm going to wait for Wiz to make a touch. Good disruption. He needs to stay with this, hopefully. Hopefully he stays with it. Nice. There we go. Nice touch. I'm going to pop it up. It's a little awkward of a ball. Wiz has this touch though. Maybe a follow up. It's off target. Good 50. See if he can get there. I'm taking it. <laughs> that was a great. That was a great play. Just like playing the angle of Gageo's shot there. My team was also ready for the defensive clear. It wasn't the best, so I knew that I had to follow that up immediately, or else they have a direct shot. But he at least made a touch and made like the change of angle. Because if he didn't make a touch, it probably would have been even more dangerous. But who knows? Sometimes missing the ball is actually better. Let's stay with this here. My teammate's still on the players. So I know with that situation, I don't really want to go for like an open shot. I want to stay kind of safe with the ball, kind of hug it a little bit. And that way, like I'm not putting myself in a, a bad spot. He should cut on this. Nice. Well played. I'm trying to see if that player will go. And he does go. And now I can make a touch off the side here. 
Great try. Staying close here. It's good aggression from them. At 50, and that's going to be it. <laughs> oh, so he did know who I was. No, honestly, they played well. There were a couple opp opportunities. There was a, it was a really good shot from Wiz at the very beginning. I think Gageo was a little bit over aggressive on certain positions with his shots when he was last man, especially if he sees me as an op as an opponent defending. Like like I said, if I look offensive on my de defense, that's when you should be a little bit hesitant to make a shot on target because you saw me in the first game when I went for that corner play or try to outplay the guy on the right side of the field. I got outplayed. It went off the backboard or off the, the back corner and then they get a free play down the field to get a goal. So you got to be really careful with those attacks when you are last man. If people are cowering in net, that's when you can go for shots pretty freely. But you've got to really think about those 50-50s when they come in and uh, make sure you don't over overextend because if your teammate just went for a shot first, it's really easy to just go for a shot immediately afterwards and then put both of you guys in the net or off the backboard of the opponent's side. So always think about what the results could be of that situation and really think about, you know, is it worth going for the shot here? Even though, you know, sometimes it's like you're down a goal and you feel like you need to. Um, that's like the, sometimes when you really need to like think about it even harder. It's like, do I really want to go down two goals now? Like we, we, we still have opportunities. I get it if it's zero seconds, but if it's not zero seconds and it's like just in the middle of the game, take a chill pill maybe and just like think about your next play. All right, we got 2v2 for this entire episode. We got Benjamin and Grenise on the team. Let's see what happens here. It's off the sidewall. Could be a clear, so I'm just going to be a little bit careful of that. Looks like both of them are kind of confused on who's going to go. I'm going to try and force this. Hopefully my teammate can go for this. Great clear. I'm going to bump this guy as well, so hopefully my teammate can go for a follow-up. Big miss. I'm taking an eye on like where he's, where that guy is. And I take this back. Good cut from Benjamin. It should be me first here. I'm going to hit this down the field. I kind of hit that early because... Like, in that position, they could cut it off. I'm just going to try and get the, the ball moving down the field. Keep pressure. All right. So, this is a little bit of an awkward ball in the corner here. There we go. Now, I can just wait for him to chip this off the wall. And uh, in that position, you can see uh, Gren here. I'm not really sure how to say his name. I don't know if I said it right. But he was able to go for that ball because Benjamin was already rotating very quickly. It's off the backboard. Should be my teammate to rotate here on the backboard. And this shot could be on target here. So, I'm just going to wait. Good clear. I'm going to move up. Good save. Trying to get a read on what my teammate's doing. Now I can go in. A little awkward of a ball here. I can't really make a good play. You can see if I'm like stuck onto the ball like that, it's better just to back off. It's a little scary for me to go for. I'm, I am last man, but I know I can beat them confidently. If you're confident in those touches, I don't I don't think you shouldn't go for them because at, at the at SSL level, you're just you're going to try and go for a lot of those crazy like quick beats. And it's just the more you go for those, the better you're going to be, you know, off. The better off you're going to be. Try and cut this off. This should be a play that my teammate should be able to get to. A good try. There's nobody there. Don't need to panic. Okay, I'm going to wait for this extra touch here. That's a great shot. The, 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 the positioning of me in that position right there, I could have, could have went back to net a little bit more. Like, in that position, also, Bulbasaur needs to get, a, a like, a 50 of some sort. So they don't get free possession towards uh, towards our net, um, but in that position, like I'm, I'm gonna be left alone for quite a lot, or quite a long time. And I need to be able to um, be supported on this. I'm gonna sit on the shot. It's around them. Awkward for them. Should be uh, Bobosaur here to follow this. I'm gonna wait in mid here. That's a good play. That's a great pass. So there was a really early uh, aggressive challenge from, I think, Gren here on the wall. And Benjamin was not on the backboard defending at that point. He went to the corner boost. So he really sh should be watching for whether or not his teammate's going to get beat and then decide if he can go for the boost or not. Let's see what Gren does here. He doesn't have the possession on the ball anymore. So I'm just going to go for a shot above the net. Great save. You can see these opponents are definitely defending the backboard pretty well, getting decent clears. Trying to make uh, like catches on the ball. There's a, a decent amount of organization here. My teammate should be the next one to go for this. He could have waited for the ball to land on the ground because he could, if he just, I'm not going to say if he opened his eyes because obviously he's looking at the game, but I'm just saying if he, like, pay attention to where the opponents are, um, he could have seen that there's nobody really approaching him on that ball and he could have made a dribble on the field. People are too quick to, like, make the game harder for themselves 
because they think the game is like fast paced and it is fast paced to a degree but there's a lot more time than you think like look how much time my team has to set up on this they don't want to push because they know that he has a free possession i'm trying to be like a little bit careful here that's actually a great shot you can see that i was hesitant to go for that ball down the field because they had a good possession honestly that was me just not respecting this guy on the control like that touch right there and also like my ssl brain wants to just pounce on that because he did let lose possession for a second that was a great catch from them should be my teammate down the field here. Oh, should be overtime. The opponents are playing really well. They have good possession, good good uh, catches, good plays down the field. They're working with each other pretty well in the rotation. This should be my ball for free. So I'm going to leave this back corner boost for my teammate. That's fine. Should be my teammate now. I'm still, still trying to stay relevant on the ball. They pop it up. It's probably going to be Gren, Gren to cr cross this. I might try to follow this on the wall. I don't really know if he's going to get it or not. Could definitely make a better shot there to go top top corner, whatever whatever you want to do. Just like get better angles on the shot. I do clear it on the field. Gren's not going to go for this though. I'm going to hit this off the backboard high. I'm not going to go for this. I'm going to make it very clear that I'm backing off. That way my teammate can go for it. Nice bump. Go for a shot. Good save. Oh. Good. good cut for my teammate. Trying to be aggressive on the uh, on the defense. To my teammate to follow this. Could be open down the field. I think they're going to get there, though. Great dunk, though, from Bobosaur. So, honestly, pretty well played from all, all three players in this lobby. A um, couple spots where I was in an awkward position, and I definitely could have approached it better and, like, attacked it a lot faster. It's, like, always this fine balance where I'm, like, trying to play at the level that we're at without like going into autopilot mode and just like attacking the ball super, super quickly. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I think there was a lot to learn in that one. Um, these are definitely the fastest players we've seen in the lobbies. And, and of course, they are um, champ two. So we are seeing the progression pretty clearly. Like you can see that these are the first champ twos we've seen. And you have to be at a much faster and more technical level to be able to hold up in these games. And obviously, this is just one example of a champ two lobby. I'm sure there's a lot, a wide range of players but either way, I think that um, that showed that you have to really be, you know, consistent and constantly think about your game to be able to improve in the game. I mean, that's like with that goes without saying, but hope you guys enjoyed the episode. That was a pretty fun one. Uh, until next time, have a great day and I'll catch you guys in the next one. All right. So I found a Ritz container with a Ritz cracker that's bitten into. And of course, I have flits here. I really didn't know what to do. I didn't know if I should put them on the container or turn them into the logo or into a cracker. I think I have an idea. I'm a little bit worried about what the result will look like, but just hold with me for a second. All right. I've got a big Ritz cracker now. What am, what am I doing? <laughs> okay. I've got an idea. Okay. Let's just, let's, let's copy Flitz. Let's get his, uh, his head on a separate object here. Okay. Do I want to like take his hair and kind of like, <laughs> um, let's grab his facial features. I'm scared of what this is going to turn into. Of his mouth, we have his mouth separately. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's erase a lot of this. Flitz, I'm so sorry. Okay, let's bring the mouth up. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Let's just clean it up a little bit. Blend that in nicely. <laughs> okay, what if, what, if, what if I created? Okay, let's. He's got like two mouths right now, man. What's happening? Let me just clean it up. <laughs> I don't know about the hair. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm feeling the hair, to be honest. I don't know. Maybe I just remove this. Now, what do I do with all this? I think I need to give a give it some sort of color blend. <laughs> Not my best work. Let's get a background for this to finish it off. I love it. It's perfect.